This is the PC I built for playing VR games. It sits in a cupboard in my living room. It's got an RTX 2070 gigabyte graphics card, which runs very hot, and I wanted to water cool it. Partly to get some more performance out of it, and also just to have a go at water cooling. The problem is that there isn't a standard water block for this card, so I'm going to fit a universal water block, and I thought I'd show you how I did it. This isn't for everyone. You'll probably invalidate the card's warranty, and you may break the card if you're not careful. But if you are careful, take your time. You could get more out of the card that you have. You'll need small screwdrivers, non-conductive thermal compound, hacksaw, and an M3 die tap set. This card is a Winforce 2 or GV N2070 WF2 8GD, but it may be possible to use this technique on other cards. The tricky part is finding a cooling block, which can be mounted to the screw holes that are available without fouling on the other components. If you look at the card edge on, you can see a row of capacitors that look like tin cans. It's difficult to make a large water block for this because they stick up higher than the other components. The water block would have to be designed to go up and over this if it was to cover the memory and the voltage regulators. This is the cooling block I'm trying to fit. As you can see, the holes don't line up, so I'll have to make some sort of bracket. The heat sink is mounted on a bracket, and hopefully I can reuse that. I started by removing the four small screws holding the black plastic cover to the heatsink. There are two on the bottom and two on the top. The front and back pieces can now be pulled apart. You can now turn it over and remove the seven screws on the back. Don't try and take the pack panel off just yet, it's still secured by the screws underneath the heatsink. The aluminium heatsink is attached to a metal bracket which is then mounted on the board. I'm going to use this as an adapter for my new cooling block. Now you just need to be brave and carefully hold onto the heatsink in one hand and the card in the other and apply gentle force to try and separate them. They won't want to move at first but if you carefully pry them apart it's only the heatsink pads holding them together. The plan here is to use the existing bracket to mount the water block bracket to the GPU. I'm going to do that by tapping some holes with M3 threads. Turning the heatsink over you can see that the bracket is just attached with four small screws. I carefully removed the bracket and realigned it on the card to see how it fitted. You can see that there are two cutouts on the left hand side which make room for some components so it's important to get the bracket the right way around. I'm using a centre punch to mark the location of the holes. I can now attach the water block to the bracket. It's critical that you space the block exactly so that it doesn't crush the chip. I used vernier calipers to calculate the offset from the bracket and offered it up before mounting anything. I'm reusing the contact pads from before to, to pick up some of the memory modules. I cleaned all the surfaces with isopropyl alcohol and then applied the thermal compound. Make sure that you use non-conductive thermal compound. This bit will probably trigger a bunch of keyboard warriors, but this is how I applied the paste so that no pressure was needed to get an even coating. Spoiler alert, it worked just fine. It looks like I've got a good even mounting with a nice distribution of thermal compound. There may be some fouling with the case 
when I come to put the fittings on, but I can always remove the plastic shroud to make room for the fittings. Next I took the heatsink and chopped out the bits which cover the memory. Go gently when cutting this so that you don't damage the fins. Make sure you remove all the swarf with a knife or a file. So we've got the card back in the machine. I've hooked it up to a loop with a, a radiator. You have to feel if that gets warm. Tap for draining it off in a minute. So now we're going to start adding some water. My test went well, but it looks like the memory definitely needs some active cooling. So I'm going to reuse one of the existing fans. They're held into the cover by three screws hidden in behind the blades. The way the connectors are wired you'll need to keep using the splitter cable unless you want to change the fan's connector. So this is the final result. It's not going to win any beauty contests, but you won't be able to see any of this once it's in the case. I've added a black heatsink to the original bracket to try and pull some heat away from the memory as the mounting screws aren't enough to draw heat into the water block. The water pipe fittings have just enough clearance, which is more luck than judgement if I'm honest, and the fan is melted on nylon, nylon standoffs. Don't use hot glue on the heatsink, it can get hot enough to melt it. So it's time to fill the complete system and give it a go. If anyone's interested I can make another video on how I did the rest of the water cooling but there are already some great videos out there uh, by people like Jay's Two Cents so check the description for links. I've maxed out the card's power and voltage limits and just used the automatic overclocking tuner in MSI Afterburner. I've modified the fan curve so that it, as soon as the car was under any sort of load it ramped up the fans to full speed. It's not audible and it keeps the memory temperatures down as the chip never actually reaches its previous temperatures. The highest I've seen is 55 degrees. It boosts to over 4 GHz and I get a heaven score of 4200. I think this makes it all worthwhile. I've got a more powerful GPU which should live for longer operating at lower temperatures and making this has been really fun. I'd definitely do it on my next build. I think water cooling the GPU is much more effective than the CPU. A good air cooler is all you really need but it makes sense to do both. Overall I'd say give it a go. Thanks for watching.